I just built this PC for about 250 plus dollars and I think this PC turned out really good aesthetic wise but at the time of this intro recording I have not benchmarked it so let's see how it does in 2025. For the case I went with the Gam Diaz Talos E3 white mid tower gaming case it has three built in 120mm ARGB fans. The original price on Amazon was $64.99 but with a coupon added I got it for $39.59. Overall aesthetic is black and white and on the top you have your USB ports, audio ports and LED power button. The mesh grills on the top and bottom are black as well as the glass is stained black. Now here we have the Gam DS logo on the front. I also really love how the glass is kind of separated here on the front. It really looks nice and makes it stand out. Our motherboard was an AliExpress buy again for $27.75. We got it on a deal. It's actually called the Zsus X99W. Pretty simple board. It has all your IO ports. Only thing you'll need is your CMOS battery but you can buy those online or at Walmart or something. Now the CPU goes Going into this thing is an Intel Xeon E5 2630v4. It's slightly less powerful than the 2680v4. Now here's what Google tells us about the specs side by side. Most notably the physical cores, threads, and the cache are way lower. As well as our base clock speed and max turbo speed are down by 0.2. Also power consumption is 85 watts compared to 120. Now to cool this thing we went with the iWangu series CPU cooler off AliExpress. It cost me about 2037. Originally it came with two black fans but I went ahead Head and use that for the last build so for a replacement i bought a 92 millimeter thermal right fan which cost me 739 before tax our ram was this machinist ddr4 ram 8 gigabytes two sticks and the speeds of these are 2133 megahertz lowest i've ever done for a build but it'll work also these came off aliexpress for about 2402 our ssd was another king spec ssd 512 gigabyte gen 3 although not as fast as the nx series this goes up to 2400 megahertz megabytes per second read speed and 1900 megabytes per second write speed now i got this on amazon for about 38.96 after tax but if you want to spend the extra 10 dollars for the nx series you can go ahead and do that as well for the gpu we went with the msi gtx 1060 gaming x 6 gigabyte model really love the back plate of this gpu as well as the colors they all go good together now this has three different core and boost clocks depending on what mode you have you have the silent mode gaming mode oc mode and this is all listed on the msi website now we are going to be held back by the memory it has 6 gigabytes of gddr5 memory as to power consumption it only takes 120 watts recommended psu is about 400 watts and it does take an 8 pin power connector as for ports this offers three display ports one hdmi and one dvid and as for price this thing was like basically 20 bucks from a friend so yeah next thing we have is our asrock challenger 650 watt power supply gold rated specifically the cl650g comes with a five-year warranty is non-modular and it costs about 64 bucks now this is what we're working with inside the case this case actually offers atx micro atx and mini itx time to add our io shield nothing hard here just the fan cable was always in the way now i just needed to add the standoff so the motherboard would fit with six screws in i made sure to align it real well there's three screws on each side that you need to screw in time to add the cmos battery and the plus sign should be closer to the cpu time to insert our 16 gigabytes of ram it should be on the first slot and the fourth slot there we go just like that it's looking clean this is literally my first time actually installing a Xeon CPU and I did not know what I was doing. Last time I did a CPU was a 12600K from Intel and it was not upside down. Now these Xeon processors are upside down. Good thing I was being extra careful because I could have bent the pins. But it was pretty easy. I ended up just watching a YouTube video and I just needed to lock it correctly. I then added the CPU cooler bracket and I installed all the screws. I gently screwed them in all slowly one by one because I didn't want one side to lift up higher than the other. The threads of one of the screws actually was bad so I had to be careful with that as well. Here's our new fan on the CPU cooler. I struggled very well off camera and here is me showing you that this metal piece goes into the plastic tab underneath. The thermal right fan actually comes with four connections. The one I'm going to be using is the four pin one. But after connecting it, I realized that I did need an ARGB hub in order to be in sync with all the other fans. Time to install our SSD right here. It's going to be located right under the CPU cooler tight space, but it's pretty easy. Just one screw and then just screw it back on. Now upon trying 
trying to take off the back cover, I realized there was a dent near where the power supply is supposed to sit. Now there was only two screws to remove the back cover. We're also going to be taking off this hard drive cover to give us more space. The look of this ASRock Challenger PSU is so good, but anyways, let's go ahead and put it on and take off the hard drive bracket. So after taking off the hard drive bracket, I went ahead and installed this and it was pretty hard to align. I think the case was dented. Thank goodness it was not dented to the point where I could not align anymore. Now the annoying part is actually organizing all this mess. So I added some red extensions to go with the aesthetic of the build. First things first, let's go ahead and connect the SATA cable that goes from the PSU to the actual cables on the case. Next is the motherboard extension, adding this zip tie cable to these connectors that we don't need. Connect to the motherboard already just to get it out the way. And then here we have our USB and HD audio. These cables are showing more than usual because this is a micro ATX and an ATX case. Let's not forget the USB 3.0 cable and the rest of the connections for our top buttons. CPU cable was originally gonna have an extension but I ended up not liking it and matching it with the other cables. Just adding another zip tie in the bag to tidy up. In order to install the GPU, you need to remove this bracket. Went ahead and popped it in and put on the screws. And for the final piece, just put in the GPU extension. After installation, there was a lot of GPU Bruh. sag, so I bought this off Amazon for $7.57 and that's after tax. Went ahead and put that on and to add more color we bought this Funko Pop to match the color. Before I show the final result here is my cable management. After weeks and days of waiting it did turn on on the first start. Our first game we have is Resident Evil 3 on custom settings, so here are the settings. Very limited because of the 6GB of VRAM, but right off the bat we were getting about high 60s to low 70s. Also in this clip, I forgot to add the temp for the GTX 1060, but that's okay. I will add it in the next clip. So here I did a test just going through this little area and it stayed over 60 FPS. Even while recording, it still felt pretty smooth. There was no spikes really. Upon entering this room with all these zombies, it did dip in FPS to like the 50s. I don't know if it was just the gun, the bullets, or the actual zombies in the room image quality could be better but i'm not complaining for what we have it wasn't really blurry or anything like that overall pretty good experience on these settings i got from 60 to almost 90 fps at times and on this third floor we got about 100 fps so at least we could say that we got 100 fps Next, I wanted to test how much more FPS we could get, so I went with the performance priority preset, and this basically just enables FSR ultra quality. All I did was turn off the actual effects like motion blur and stuff like that. Now, this was a decent experience. I went over 100 FPS around like 130 to 140, even at times hitting 150, but here in this little clip, we're hitting like a little bit over 100 FPS. Now, as far as image quality, this looked pretty decent. Um, it's obviously fsr so at times like in the hair you could see like the little noise and you know from far away the reflections might look a little blurry it did look blurry but not too much compared to other games really quick just enjoy this fsr flashbang real quick now here i got switched to jill and actually the fsr was blurry here in the light so i didn't want to lie to you guys and make it seem like it was all good and done but yeah fsr has its imperfections you probably can't tell throughout this recording it looked worse though on my monitor next game is assassin's creed origins i went ahead and put it on default settings i just turned off depth of field now i ran the benchmark test and it averaged 52 fps i was not happy with this result so i went ahead and tried high settings and here are the settings just to show you guys real quick now we ran the benchmark and I still was not happy with the results. We got still under 60 FPS. The average was 57, just a little bit more than the actual default settings. I really did not want to compromise the graphics so I went ahead with medium settings and I ran the benchmark test. Now this was a better FPS average, we got about 63. I hopped in the game for myself to see how it would run and it did about 60 plus FPS. The image quality was pretty decent too, I wouldn't complain about that. I even went to the desert where you get a lot more FPS and it was getting from low 70s to low 90s. 
All right, next game we have is Red Dead Redemption 2. I went ahead and restored all default settings, so here we go. We got a minimum of 25 FPS, 45 for maximum FPS, and 33 FPS for average FPS. Was not satisfied with those results, so I went ahead and took matters in my own hands. I put this all on basically medium settings. I think there was one setting that was low, but yeah, the game looked pretty good as far as image quality, and we were getting from high 40s to about low 50s. Again, like AC Origin, the image quality was not too compromised it was on medium settings and it still looked good i wish i could have benchmarked more but for time's sake i ended up just doing an fsr performance test and here's the results we got a little bit over 60 fps with these settings still on medium but the image quality did tank because as you can see the trees far away are a little blurry they look less detailed as well as the bushes and shrubs also take a look at our character and this ghost thing that is appearing here as we move the camera left and right i personally would go with the native resolution instead of using fsr but fps wise this is still good now here we have a more modern title marvel arrivals we have actually the default settings set the only thing i did change was nvidia reflex low latency to on your quality isn't going to be that good just because you are using fsr quality with these settings after the benchmark was done we saw that we got a 34 fps average not great but there's this feature to auto optimize after and we went ahead and did that also we turned on frame gen this was a better FPS average. We got about 75. I actually did end up going with the settings in a game and it felt pretty good, but at the same time you had that delay because of the frame gen. I'm gonna put this game in here even though it's a little bit older of a game, Rise of the Tomb Raider, but yeah, we went ahead, started the benchmark test and we got an overall score of 95 FPS. Our final game is, well, the finals. And with this game, I went with default settings literally because I had a Ryzen 5 5500 paired with a GTX 1080 and that didn't even do that good. But yeah, the overall image quality was okay. Uh, it wasn't too blurry, but yeah, the FPS, you know, it fluctuates being in the 40s to 50s, even high 60s at times. Gameplay experience was just okay. It wasn't good or great. You can actually turn on frame gen to get more FPS, but then you would have that delay. And in this game, that's a big disadvantage. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you guys think about the video i want to thank you guys for 100 subs i believe we're at 106 at the moment i'm already cooking up that 100 subscriber special so stay tuned also leave recommendations in the comments on what gpus or cpus you would like to see as well as just drop a like on this video thanks again and i'll see you guys in the next video